In this video, we're going to show that the complete graph on five vertices is not planar and that the complete bipartite graph with both partite sets having three vertices is not planar. And we're going to do so using a nice bound on the number of edges. So let's start with the graph K5. Recall from the previous video that if a graph is maximal planar, then the number of edges is equal to three times the number of vertices minus six. And as a corollary to that from the last video, we saw that that means if a graph is planar, then the number of edges it has is less than or equal to three times the number of vertices minus six. So we're going to use this nice bound in order to prove that K5 is not planar. So let's start. We're stating it as a fact that K5 is not planar. And let me remind you that K5 being the complete graph on five vertices has just five vertices and every pair of vertices is connected by an edge. So let's start the proof by noting that in K5, it has five vertices and 10 edges. So let's write this down. This means that N equals five and M equals 10. Now, if K5 was planar, then the number of edges M must be less than or equal to three times N minus six. Well, we know what N is, so let's plug it in. Now we get that M has to be less than or equal to nine, but we already know that M equals 10. Therefore, K5 cannot be planar. If it was, it would have to have at most nine edges. So that was a really simple proof of the fact that this graph is non-planar. We used an important bound on the number of edges. And now what we want to do is see if we can do something similar to prove that K33 is also not planar. So to start, we're going to derive a similar bound on the number of edges if there's an additional condition on the graph. So in particular, the lemma that we want to prove is if G is a planar graph with N vertices and M edges and has no triangles, then the number of edges is at most two times n minus four. So we already know that if a graph is planar, then the number of vertices is bounded by three times n minus six. But we're saying that if we add the additional constraint that the graph has no triangles, then the number of edges can be at most two n minus four. The proof of this is going to be very similar to the proof we saw in the previous video, which gave us the other bound. So let's start the proof by considering a plane drawing of the graph G. Now we add edges while keeping the resulting graph, a plane graph with no triangles until we get to a graph G prime, which is maximal with respect to this property. When I say this property, I mean the property that it's still a plane graph and has no triangles. So the graph G prime has M prime edges, which is at least as big as M, which was what we started with. And if we consider the sum over all of the regions in the drawing of G prime, and what we're summing up is the number of edges on the boundary of each of those regions, what are we going to get? Well, definitely something that is at least four times R, where little r is the number of regions. This is because G prime has at least four edges on the boundary of every one of its regions. So remember, little r here is the number of regions in the graph G prime in its plane drawing. But remember, as we've seen in a previous video, the sum on the left hand side is counting up all of the edges on the boundaries. So if you think about a particular edge, it was counted once on one boundary and another time on the other side. So every edge was counted twice. This means that the sum on the left hand side equals two times M prime. And now we have a relationship between M prime and R. We're going to use this. It tells us that R is less than or equal to M prime divided by two. But remember, that G prime is a plane graph, which means that Euler's formula holds for it. This tells us that two is equal to N minus M prime plus R. And we also know something about R in terms of M prime. So this whole thing is less than or equal to 
n minus m prime plus m prime divided by 2. Rearranging this, we get m prime divided by 2 is less than or equal to n minus 2. Multiply both sides of this by 2 and you see that m prime is less than or equal to 2 times n minus 4. Remember, our original graph g also has n vertices, but it has m edges, which is less than or equal to m prime. So we can just put m below that in the inequality and now we know that m is also less than or equal to 2 times n minus 4. So we've proved the bound that we were aiming for. All right, this tells us that as long as our graph is a planar graph with no triangles, we have another bound that we can use on the number of edges. And we want to use this bound to help us in our next proof. What is it that we want to prove? The fact that K33 is not planar. So let's draw K33 over here. It has two partite sets, both with three elements in it. And then it has every possible edge between one set and the other. To start the proof, let's begin by noticing that K33 has six vertices and nine edges. And we're going to use this together with the bound that we just proved. Remember that K33 is bipartite. And this means that it has no odd cycles. You can see a proof of this in a previous video. Links will be in the description below. In particular, since it has no odd cycles, this means that K33 has no triangles. All right, now let's say if K33 was planar, then it would be planar with no triangles. So we can use the bound that we just proved that M has to be less than or equal to two times N minus four. But plug in what N is, N is six, and now you get that M should be less than or equal to eight but we already know that m equals 9, so this cannot be true. In other words, k33 cannot be planar. Now we've seen that k5 and k33 are non-planar graphs. And it should also be pretty clear that if a graph G contains either k5 or k33 as a subgraph, then that graph G is also non-planar. In other words, if you're hoping that a graph is planar, it is forbidden from having a subgraph of K5 or a subgraph of K33. But the fascinating part is that it turns out that these two graphs, K5 and K33, are essentially the only forbidden subgraphs. Now, there's a little bit more to it. There's another definition and some more details to work out, but this will lead into Kuratowski's theorem. And we'll take a look at what that means in the next video. Thanks for watching and I hope you've had fun with graph theory today. Take a look at related videos on this side and I'll see you next time.